Well, John, welcome to Bigger Questions. Thank you, Robin. That's great. Now, you work for Half Time Australia. So, what exactly is that? It's not about providing oranges at football games, is it? Well, it's sort of pretty close because okay. it's about imagine I get playing a game of any sport, football or and you didn't stop at half time, you went straight into the third quarter and you didn't have time out. What yeah. would happen to performance if it wasn't going so well? Right. Well, it depends on how you're going in the first half, I suppose. That's right. So if you're not going so well. But most of us really would benefit um, by taking pausing and reflecting and taking time out at a time maybe halfway in our life or at a time when we think maybe I do need to stop. Um, so we do that and uh, Peter Drucker, a well-known management author, uh, he actually talks about life one and life two. If we go back 117 years, people were living to age 48. And um, I wouldn't be here. There'd be a few other people here who would be lying <laughs> prostrate with me. Um, so, but he, he coined the phrase today, we have life one and life two. People are overprepared for life one, but we're underprepared for life two. So what halftime is about is stopping to pause and reflect and prepare for life too. And we're a bit counterculture because we actually say that the second half of your life can be should be better than the first. And we help people, which is counter our culture, which is actually saying once you turn over age 50, your best years are behind you. And we, we're actually saying the opposite. Well, they do say that the third quarter is the premiership quarter or something, isn't it? That's, that's the, it. That's yep. the best time is yep. to come. Now, John, the Old Testament wisdom book of Ecclesiastes in the Bible says in chapter 5, whoever loves money never has enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with their income. This too is meaningless. Now, as someone who's worked in funds, funds management and financial planning, um, wouldn't you have done yourself out of a job uh, if you share this perspective with your clients? Interesting, interesting. Um, yeah, I think all of us can have jobs where um, we, we sometimes would question, is this really helping a person or whatever? Um, I found as a financial planner, the unhappiest clients were the ones with the most money, clearly. Right. And it was depressing, actually. Um, the people with no money, um, that was pretty tough as well. But I found the people who respected money and realised that it, was, it could be used for good um, they could live on much less and they used it um, in a positive sense. So I used to love the people who, who, who'd actually sit down and say, we could cut out these expenses and these things. We don't really need them because money doesn't really make us happy. That actually worked out. So money then becomes a very useful and mm. very valuable thing. Respecting it, I think, is the mm. key and understanding where it fits 